Good evening fellow Plexers. Today's video is going to be a comparative video and the topic is going to be as with all my videos Plex naming conventions and how to properly name your media as opposed to a certain segment of Plex users who believe that you cannot use a space in a file name or a quote-unquote illegal character. So what I've done is I've prepped a few movie files, um, well basically file names from my media collection, but I'm using the same dummy file. It's a little five-second recording I've done with my screen recorder program just to make copying to my server quickly. Um, so I have this first movie called 100% Wolf. I have dollar sign from 1971. It's an early Goldie Hawn movie. I have Apollo 10 and a half. You can see there's a fraction in the file name. Now I couldn't name this fraction myself with my Linux computer easily, but that's exactly how the media is named at TMDB and I suspect IMDB also. FileBot was able to name that easily. I'm using Emma as an example of a movie that was released um, two different times in the same year. Well, let's say two different movies were released with the same name in the same year. <clears throat> so Plex wouldn't know how to scan this movie in unless you added extra information like either the IMDB database number or the TMDB database number. So I'm not going to do much with this besides just show that Plex can scan it in perfectly. If I simply had this movie named Emma1996 and you knew which poster matched up with the version you had, FileBot would ask you which version and you could pick it there and then FileBot could apply the database number. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is going to be interesting because the actual title at TMDB and IMDB contains a question mark. A question mark is an illegal character, but FileBot is aware of that. And lastly, we have just this movie I've never heard of. I grabbed it out of the movie database, number sign or hashtag 2022. <clears throat> Excuse my cold. So we want, I want to see how these scan into a test movie library, and I've already prepped this basic folder where anybody could copy the file names from either database and apply them to your folders and your files. The most basic compliant file name you could want. And I'll admit right up the front, I know I'm going to have issues with this movie and that movie. I don't think I'll have an issue with the other ones. Now this is the same structure, but I'm going to rename these to more advanced files and folder structures with FileBot. And in the non-compliant folder, this is where I'm going to start. This is named for exactly as someone might name something if they don't believe you can use these certain characters and you must um, replace every natural space with an underscore. So there's no um, percentage here, and the space is changed to an underscore. Same with Apollo 10, there's no fraction. The dollar sign had to be written out, but of course it's not written out at the database. <clears throat> and that's the first point of contention I would bring up with anyone who's under this false belief. These databases exist for media servers. Why would they name the movie dollar sign? Even if the real movie was named dollar sign, why wouldn't the database, either database, list it spelled out, but they actually list it as a dollar sign? And they do that because it works with media server software. MB has the same naming convention as Plex. Cody has the same naming convention. And it just works. So again, a simple file name um, with spaces replaced by 
underscores, and I've added in the TMDB ID number just to be fair for this one movie. I decided not to put it in the folder. So the, the number sign movie can be expressed two ways, written out, number sign or hashtag. I can try each of them or one of them. And again, we've got the Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf um, set up this way. So I'm going to start here, and when we see that it doesn't work being scanned into my Plex server, I'll then remove it, rescan the server, and we'll open up some Plex support documents that will prove this is not the way you want to be naming your media. There is no reason to gum up Plex scanning. You have all the reasons in the world to follow Plex's actual naming conventions. So let me do this one at a time. My server is set up for an automatic scan when media is dropped in. So I'm going to cut that and drop it in and I put one regular movie in this test library folder. All right, we see the activity. and there's no metadata match, unfortunately. Let's try Apollo 10 and a half. <clears throat> okay, we see the 10 and a half there. We have a match. So this non-compliant way does work for that movie. Let's try the dollar sign. I can guarantee that this isn't going to work. But I'm open to a surprise. So that doesn't work. Emma should work because the actual file has the TMDB database number. And Emma scanned in, and it's the right copy of Emma. So, shall we try both of these? There might be a movie named Hashtag. Ah, there is, but it's not the movie we need it to be. So I'm going to move that back and now I'm going to try number sign again that didn't scan and lastly we'll do who's afraid of Virginia, Virginia Wolf, which should scan properly because we didn't include the actual illegal character of a question mark. So now the question is, can we fix match this because of these poor file names? So the actual title is this. So let's try the database number from IMDB. This is easier to look up at the movie database. Okay, so there it is. And I'll have to use a little trick because my Chrome apps aren't displaying the URL. <clears throat> so I'll just get a little notepad going here and I will copy the URL 
paste it in here and grab the TT number out of it. All right, so now we can go back to Plex and do a search option and paste that TT number in here and see if we can find it. No matches. So th these movies are going to be hard to match, so I'm not going to try to do the dollar sign, but let's see if we can match up this movie. Now that one was easier to work because Plex had more to go on. So that was a manual success. And you know, we might as well try this, right? Might as well try this, see if we can get it matched up. The old college try. Oh, so this was an easier manual match than I thought. So this one is the impossible to match. Okay, so let's copy everything back and we'll do the same thing. Let me let me leave my default real movie. And let's see if Plex gets rid of everything. And we're going to talk about naming conventions from Plex next. And I have a Chrome app for that. So here's the master support list <clears throat> of all the Plex documents. And we want to slide all the way down to uh, your media. So the main movie um, article is right here naming and organizing your movies. It gives all the rules and if you don't like to read you can just use their examples. And every written example for every movie um, support document Plex uses a space, a natural space between words in a movie name. Um, and it uses a period to separate important parts of a subtitle. So it would be the proper movie name that you'd find at TMDB or IMDB, dot EN or ENG for the English language, dot SRT for the subtitle format. And if you slide down, it shows you how to use the IMDB number or the TMDB number like we did with the one movie, with the Emma to help Plex identify it. It also shows you how to use addition tags. And your addition tag um, could, could be in the folder or it could just be in the file. It could be the folder and the file or it could be just in the file name. And you'll see this Blade Runner um, is the plain folder and this Blade Runner is the edition um, version but you could put both this file and this file in this folder. Plex won't mind a bit. Let's see this talks about um, movies split across multiple files. You can simply do a, a part one and a part two or a CD1, CD2 and so on. That's very easy. So if we back up, I'm going to skip to the multi-version support article. And this is where Plex has told us how to name different versions of, a, of the same movie. This isn't different editions, but just different resolutions of the same movie. If you had a 4K movie, this could be 4K or 2160. This could be SD, it could be 480, it could be 720. And whenever Plex uses an example like this, it always uses, always uses except for one other instance, the official separator of a space dash space. 
Notice there are no underscores any place to be found. Natural spaces are always used besides the one, well actually that's not an exception. Uh, the exception is a space dash space can be replaced by a period. And that's why I skipped this support document. This is multiple editions for movies and this tells you how to actually add the edition tag in the curly Q brackets edition dash whatever the edition is and then you end it with a curly Q bracket. And if you slide down and look at other examples, Plex has replaced that space dash space with a period. And that's the first time they've done that. This is a more uh, modern and recently released document. But no, they never show an example where a natural space is replaced by a period or an underscore. Because Plex recognizes every modern operating system can handle movies named a modern way. And it's not like you're going to run your Plex data, your Plex movie files or, or series files through some old Unix or DOS program that wouldn't be able to handle it. You're going to use modern utilities like um, FileBot, like MKV Toolmix, like Tiny Media Manager. You're not going to subject these files to old-fashioned programs that don't understand modern naming conventions. So this is a great place to start. Plex has documents on everything. And my theory is that if you use these documents to your advantage and don't go off into the wild thinking that Plex is so forgiving that you can do whatever you want, you'll be better for it. The more you stick to the rules, the more your media server, your Plex media server will be like a finely tuned Swiss watch. The more you deviate, the little bit of clunkiness you introduce. And if you get too far afield, you're going to think Plex has problems when it doesn't. So I just wanted to go over some of those um, documents. Feel free to read through them. I encourage you to read through them. So let's go back to our server. We don't need IMDB anymore. So let's try this same thing again with the basic file names. Let me skinny this up so we can see more of the action. I'm going to copy two in at a time. Alright, so it's scanning both of them. And without the Without the underscores, Plex recognized this movie right away, and also because it has the percentage sign in it. It's still having trouble with the dollar sign. This is going to need the TMDB number. So I'm not going to fix match it because we know we can fix match it. Um, well, we know we can fix match one of them, but not the other, right? So let's grab all four of these and copy them in. Okay, so with, with modern naming conventions and um, be able to use the characters that some think are illegal that the databases also use, we had a, uh, a good success here. And we know we can fix match this one pretty easily. Oh, I'm in the wrong area. Well, maybe not so easily. So we could spend some more fix matching this, but we're not going to. Because we're going to show you the easy way. So let me get rid of everything. Plex should rescan.
Now, a healthy server is one that has some automatic scheduled tasks set up. You should be frequently, every couple, two, three days, um, optimizing your database and cleaning your bundles. And you should let Plex refresh meta metadata occasionally. So let's move that off screen for a minute. And we are going to open up this whole folder in FileBot. And I am going to use a custom expression. So let's look at that custom expression for a second. Let me get my little notepad up here again. So this is my own expression. I may be changing things to um, to I may be changing things up a little bit, but this basically creates the name and year and the TMDB ID number for the folder. Then it creates the name and year and TMDB no number again for the file name, and this little bit is something I borrowed from another group member that automatically looks to see if it's a special edition, like a remastered edition or an uncut. Um, you can you can have non-standard edition, editions and FileBot won't pick those up, but FileBot is aware of a lot of standard editions and just including that in your expression will add it automatically. So maybe you, maybe you thought you, you ripped a regular version of I don't know, The Godfather, and you run it through FileBot and you find out it's a special edition. So then, I've borrowed something from the Plex Series Library Support article. Um, the most recent change they made is they decided to put anything that they don't want the Plex Series Scanner to scan into brackets. That change has not been made in a Plex movie library for the scanner there yet, but in anticipation that it might, I've included it in my FileBot expression to put the video um, format, which will be the resolution, um, into the brackets along with the video codec, the audio format, the audio codec, and then the developer of FileBot helped me work out this other little bit of magic right through here. This automatically detects either English or unlabeled embedded subtitles and it adds either of these two flags to the file name. So you just know by renaming the file with FileBot that it has embedded subtitles. And I thought it was important to know whether they were actually English or not English. Now you could have made the expression longer to label French subtitles is French and Eng or, or German is German, but I only care about whether they're English. So I might have an unlabeled English subtitle, and now just by renaming a file about it gives me the opportunity to fix that flag by using MKV tool nicks. And this last little bit, this SUBT in the curly Q brackets, helps file about rename external dot SRT file bots. File bot is weak in that area. It cannot tell a hearing impaired from a um, forced from a default SRT subtitle. But there's tricks that you can rename things quickly if you have multiple subtitles. But we're not going to talk about that in this video. But this is just my ex current expression and the one I'm going to run here. So let me drag everything in and I'll pick that expression. And this is going to create folder structure too. So you see it's going to create it in the media folder that we're in, in the movie folder that we're in, and it's going to create everything we need including the TMDB ID number. Now FileBot is versatile. I can also set this up to use the IMDB number. Now this isn't creating folder structure, 
but it is including the IMDB number and I could I could modify the expression to create folder structure. I prefer TMDB, but once in the rarest of blue moons, you will find a movie entry at IMDB, but not at TMDB. And Plex keeps a combined cache of both databases as their movie scanner, kind of in a secret sauce way. Okay, so let's rename these. And this is the beauty of FileBot. This is the moment I've been waiting to arrive at. FileBot already recognizes what characters are legal and what characters are not legal for your operating system. It wants to remove a colon and it also wants to remove the question mark. FileBot takes the worry out of knowing what character is legal or illegal. You don't have to think about it. So I just, I just clicked validate to remove those and continue will rename the, the media. Okay, so that's gone now. Um, there's nothing in this and it instead put all those folders right in the directory we were working out of. All right, so there's all my movies. Let's bring Plex back into play. And I'm going to copy all of these at once into my test movie library. And let's see what happens. So I picked some of the hardest file names you might come across. And using a little bit of an advanced FileBot expression, you've set Plex up for perfection. You can't do it any other way, folks. You really can't. And I would suggest anyone hanging on to the past that you're welcome to do so but you simply make your own Plex server experience more difficult. And I don't understand why anyone would want to do that. If you follow Plex's suggestions for the right hardware by using an inexpensive late John Intel CPU that has QuickSync, you will have a super powerful NAS. Yes, you can use an old server with two um, Xeon processors in them. But then you've got to make sure it can take an NVIDIA card. And then you've got to make sure you can learn how to unlock the drivers. You can be really cool using all this old hardware. Or you can simply buy an inexpensive motherboard, brand name motherboard that takes a 8th gen i3 processor and build your server from that. You can you can throw your server on a, well, not as easily now, but a Synology NAS that has a modern Celeron CPU in it, a four-core Celeron CPU that also has the Intel QuickSync, the iGPU. That's what I run my NAS on. Um, and I have a huge collection. So I don't know what to say to the folks that insist that using an old school file, file name system that did serve a purpose in the distant past as the go-to gold standard for Plex now, they're absolutely insane and they are chasing their own tail. Please do not follow them. They do not know what good advice is. You've seen it in action. You've seen what works. And why would, you, why would you ever want to use a feature called fix match? Um, let's see where it is, fix match. When I first started with Plex, I followed others' bad advice and I used fix match like it was going out of style. I would consult Plex support groups and, and Reddit and the internet to try to figure out how to make Plex or fix match work in situations I didn't want to because my files were so poorly named and organized. So 
I'm not really exasperated. I just kind of sound like that because I have a cold. Um, I am going to put my movie expression and my series expression, maybe a couple of them, into the description for this video for anyone who wants to um, use them. I have other Filebot videos on my YouTube channel. Look, I'm not a YouTuber. I'll never ask you to subscribe. I'm just an average guy who loves Plex and likes helping out other Plex users. And I don't even want a thumbs up. All I want you to do is to have a Plex server that works like a freaking Swiss watch. And this is one of the main aspects. Folder names and file st um, structures. It's just where it's at. Um, you know, I might as well add one more bit. If you want to get into Plex, and you might want to use Docker. Docker has one rule. I don't understand it. Matthew, Matthew Peterson taught it to me. You might recognize him in the two, two big Plex groups as the Docker expert. You want everything to be lowercase. So this is how I set mine up. Well, actually, and of course, my um, file names are more expressive than this, but. You want lowercase at everything above your movie folder name or your series name. And of course, I have multiple libraries and I have everything nested. So let's just copy this. Um, and of course, under the movie sort library folder, I have a documentary movie library. I have an arts on stage. I have a concerts. And then my, my TV um, library sort folder only has two subfolders. And that would be a plain TV like this. And I've graduated to putting a year into all my recently added series. I didn't used to do that, but thanks to the magic of Filebot, everything just gets that much better when you follow every Plex rule. And I wasn't following the suggestion to put the release year in. And, and you get the rest. This is just going to be the episode. And that could be enough, but Filebot also puts in the, the episode name. So then this is just another library folder inside the TV sort library folder. And again, all the kids TV shows get dumped into this. So if you're interested in Docker, this is how you want to set things up. My first um, Plex server was on a different Synology NAS. Everything was uppercase. Everything was parallel instead of being nested. And it worked fine. As long as everything's named properly, it works just fine. But this is kind of an easier system to get into. Um, let, me, let me bring my... NAS folder over. So if I go here, so I've got Plex and I've got sort folders for all my different libraries. Movie, photo, pre-roll. It's not really a library, but I keep my pre-rolls handy. Um, if I go into the movie one, here's my actual movie libraries. So 
depending on which group you're in, I probably just showed something that might not be too cool to show. But if you back up and you pick up the one other library folder and you're into that sort of stuff, it's good to have certain things land inside your main Plex folder because you reduce disk activity that way. That should be a big enough hint for those in the know. So anyway, thanks for watching and do yourself a favor. Make Plex run like a freaking Swiss watch. And if you're if you're in um, the Plex Media Server Support Group and you want help with something, feel free to reach out with me. While a few may think I don't know what I'm talking about, I do know that things run perfectly well on my server and all my users direct stream, except for a few that use some old Roku devices. And life is good. I want your Plex life to be good too. Happy Plexing.